Hi. Hey, welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit and to fill you with hope. Today we're going to have an afterlife channeling session with Judy Garland. We have talked with Miss Judy many times before. She has a playlist. So if we don't cover something in this particular chat, know that I think she has like six videos. Plus, I actually toured her home in Grand Rapids, Minnesota a couple of years ago back in 2019 and took a ton of pictures and videos. And so there's a video of that as well. So you can check that out if you're a mega fan. Okay, let me just make sure. Let's just see if this is checking my sound. Is Good. Okay, good. Good. Okay, good. Yay. All right. I have the chat going as well. Let's just make sure. Give it a second to pop up. It's not showing that it's live yet. Okay. Ah, there we are. Good. Sometimes it takes a minute, YouTube, you know. I'm trying to get good lighting, and my lighting is horrible. Sorry, you guys. It's just going to be that way. I don't know why. It's just going to be that way. All right. So, um, oh, and thank you to my friend in Maine who sent me this awesome pride shirt. It's got all these flowers blooming on it. It's a blooming shirt. So thank you for that. Appreciated. Um, Judy is one of the many women actresses, musicians that are on the list of um, iconic in, um, and, and has a lot of fans from the gay community. And so um, just like Cher or Madonna, for example. So um, that is in part why we're going to chat with her. Plus, I discovered, okay, so... What happens, uh, so we're gonna chat a little bit first so you can understand kind of how this unfolds for me and then hopefully it'll make intuition and spiritual connection not weird. It'll make it kind of a natural occurrence so that when it happens for you with one of your loved ones or with a famous person, because it can, by the way, then it won't be such an oddity, okay? Um, it still feels strange to say no, but it's, Hopefully it'll be a little more normal, maybe, or acceptable. <laughs> so hopefully you won't push it away if it happens. That's the point, right? So June, um, sometimes there are, you know, anniversaries or things like that of somebody's death date, somebody's birthday, or a very specific event in their lives where when I'm tapping into offering to the universe the question of who shall I channel? and feeling into whatever comes into alignment for me personally as a spirit and as a human, translating that information, sharing the messages, being a messenger. And so um, like this month would be like a Marilyn Monroe, which we already did in May, end of May, I think it was, um, because uh, her birthday was the beginning of this month. And then um, there could be others too as well. I'm not gonna mention them all because all of a sudden I'll feel them. I don't want to call them in. Um, she's fine because I had conversations with her a little bit yesterday, so it's fine. Um, I'm just on my own, <laughs> not recorded. Um, but Judy Garland is one that I think of during Pride Month, so like in June here, right? So, um, but also it turns out that this was her month that she died. She died on June uh, June twenty second, and in 1969, which another pride connection. So the Stonewall riots, if you don't know about that, learn about it, just Google it, Stonewall riots. In New York City, it was like this uprising finally of like, the queer community was like, forget it. This is like, we have had enough of this um, mistreatment and abuse. And so um, they fought back finally, right? They stood up for their civil rights and their human rights. And um, that was kind of what came out of that was eventually um, reforms and, and, and a whole bunch of 
um, major, lots of work, lots of activism, lots of ad advocacy, all that stuff, right? And so it turns out that Judy Garland died on June 22nd, 1969, and the Stonewall riots were on June 28th, 1969. So right before the riots. And she was an icon for, um, for gay people in, in some regards. And, you know, just like Cher or maybe Madonna or that kind of thing. Um, so I'm, I would like to have some conversations with her about not just her iconic status, but about the timing of her death too. I'm curious about that and what she thinks about or what she can give us as far as perspective about maybe the things that are going on on the earth right now, you know, with the, the queer community, okay? So if this isn't your jam, this topic isn't your jam, you can move along. And if it is, welcome. Everybody is welcome here. We're inclusive here on Above Life Channel. Hey in the chat. Hey to the journey. Hey to Anna. Hey to Mary. Let me see who else is here in the chat. Hey to one love. Oh, bad sound. The sound is bad. Is the sound bad? Just a second. Let me check it. Is the sound bad? 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 Can you tell me that in the chat if it's just one person or if it's the actual? I don't want to do this if the sound is bad. That's hard to. I don't want to do this if the sound is bad. Oh, it sounds good. Okay, good. It may have just been a moment and it may have been somebody's um, cell service or what have you. Okay, I just want to make sure. Thank you. Okay, so let's bring in Judy and see what she wants to talk about. I'm going to just be open to what she wants to chat about. Um, I am curious about the timing of her death, though. That is just interesting to me. So let's see. Judy, can you come on in? <sighs> she says, such a serious topic, such a serious topic. If you give Judy a platform, she will talk your ear off. She has a lot to say. I have a lot to say about politics, she says. I have a lot to say about politics and about just in general, the way people are treated. Okay. Now, I have been personally, Judy, you know this, I've been watching a lot about um, one of one of the YouTubers I like to watch is Adam the Woo. <laughs> yeah, you guys, I like to watch Adam the Woo uh, because he goes to places I like, like Disney World, Disneyland, um, and some old Hollywood stuff. Like he loves movies and film, and he loves Back to the Future, the movie, and so do I. Love that movie, Marty McFly. Oh my God, Michael J. Fox. It was so great, iconic. And he is really into like filming locations and stuff. And I love that. And it just so happened last week when I needed a little bit of a distraction and a pick me up, I started watching his. Um, he was in, he is in Hollywood in California. And uh, he did the Universal Stu Universal Tours backlot like tour and stuff. And then he also went to, um, Warner Brothers Studios, the, the ranch, actually, that I guess is going to be torn down. And he got all sorts of access to film houses like um, set locations like um, the Bewitched House and the um, Christmas Vacation House, the Griswold House. I was like, yeah, I was so excited. <laughs> I love that stuff. I love it. And walking around to like um, the studio where um, in the Universal Studios where like Hitchcock's, um, Alfred Hitchcock's uh, um, office was and stuff. You know what I mean? I mean, just in the psycho house and all that stuff. So it's just so cool. And it just really got me supercharged and feeling into the energy of Hollywood, old Hollywood. And 
So Judy fits right into that, right? And she has strong opinions about Hollywood. She is not, it is not in her taste palette. Like she would much prefer instead of being an actress to just sing and be a musician. Like if you had to do it all over again, is that what you would declare? Um, musicals are fun. Yeah, the dancing and the singing is fun, she said, but you know, that's fine. She said, but I much prefer to sing. I much prefer to sing. And there's a lot of energy, as we all know, uh, your traumatic past. Um, and, and we don't want to downplay that because child actors were treated horrifically um, in Hollywood. And back in the, um, the times of when you did film um, Somewhere Over the Rain, or not Somewhere Over the Rainbow, geez, Wizard of Oz and stuff. I mean, that was just horrific, you know, the, the, the treatment and the abuse and the drugs and the the way that their bodies were just pushed, pushed, pushed and, and manipulated and used and stuff. It's just horrific. So we know that. And yet you continued to move ahead and have a career in the life and children and family and all that. And you became this iconic figure and And I see you, every time I see you, you have a drink in your hand. So there's definitely the alcoholic piece is obvious. And she's like a gin and tonic is what she's saying, gin and tonic. This is water with lime in it, FYI. <laughs> it's water with lime. I thought I should make that clear, but. Um, and she. She says, you can't blame anyone for your own mistakes. And she says, um, she's showing me a lot. She's giving me a lot of empathic information. So I just want to honor and acknowledge that, okay? That there's a lot of empath, empathic, which is feeling, sensing in your heart space, clairsentience. It's where most of you, that's how most of you get intuitive information. This is like all over the place a little bit. It's a little bit scattered. Do you feel that? Kind of like, I feel it like this. Do you guys feel that too? I have very specific things I want to talk to her about or kind of like I want her I want her here because of Pride Month. But I also. Um, there's so much trauma, there's so much pain, like there's so much um, recognition of suffering and hardship from her. And yet she doesn't want to be remembered for that. But she has a, a, a huge voice to talk about why or to talk about like. Um, it's kind of like she's, I'm just going to say it like this, but it's not exactly right. Okay, you guys, that she's kind of making an excuse a little bit for like the alcoholic piece, um, which self-medicating is a necessity for some people. And you do it in different ways through eating, through um, substances, through exercise, you know, through binging on TV or video games or whatever your thing is, right? And people do all sorts of numbing, right? Or self-medicating. So I would love to talk to you, Judy, about, um, cause she's making me feel like, like there's a lot, you guys, it's scattered. There's like four boxes of stuff for her. It's like old file boxes that I can tap into and get information. And so I, there's a lot for her about the, uh, being a childhood star that she's very vocal about and wants like people to recognize how horrific the treatment was of kids. Um, and then there's also a piece of this, the gay community where she just, like she says, they just embodied me and it, like accepted me, like just embr embraced, not embodied, embraced me. And it was lovely. It's lovely. And um, she just really, um, she feels a little bit of Liz, a little bit Liz Taylor-like um, in regards to gay rights or human rights kind of thing. Um, I'm trying to feel into if she, like her own sexuality, I don't feel, I, I we haven't talked about that. I haven't talked to her about that in her life experience. Yeah, I, I definitely feel her as <laughs> not a, a non-queer person. She's definitely an ally, I would say. Um, 
And then she says, she's like literally drinking something. And she's like literally saying, I wish I could have been attracted to women. It might've made my life much easier. She says, because men, men were a hardship. So she says, men were a hardship. Ooh. Shout out to Maximilian. I just have to say that. Bonjour. Uh, all right. He's one of the um, people, uh, he's a viewer that originally um, encouraged me. I was inspired because of him to start channeling her. So thank you for that. I know you'll be watching. I hope you're doing well. Okay, so tell us what you, your politics. Talk to us about politics. She says, oh. And then she's smoking. She says, oh. It's like we're sitting at a bar, you guys. Just She's just like, oh. Mm. I never really thought of her as a political activist, but um, what can you share about your, God, I don't know what to ask her. Let me just feel into her and see what she has to share. It's really tough to connect with her and channel with her right now because she literally feels drunk to me. I'm not trying to be rude. I, I'm never rude. I, I try not to be rude to spirits, but why do I feel you that way? She says, because there's this disruption in the field, there's a disruption. She says, tune in. Tune in. Don't buy into the perspective or perception of how many have seen me. There's an invitation here to go deeper. I can feel that. Okay, so I need to ground myself and feel into her energy. I'm like, she says to me, JFK, she's showing me history, JFK, Martin Luther King, It's so messy, she says. Their history is so messy. It's so messy. It's always white men in power, isn't it? I see not much has changed, she says. I see not much has changed. Yeah, I'm getting this feeling like she doesn't feel like a big voter, or let's vote, or get out the vote, or anything like that, like a Jane Fonda vibe, nothing like that. I don't feel that at all. And it's not that she didn't care. It's just that she's so cynical. There's so much jadedness about, um, and she's saying the business of Hollywood really eroded her faith in people. She says, everyone was out for themselves, the big sharks. She says, the sharks. And she said, um, and they prey upon the weak, upon your fears. They intimidate you. And she says, the power of the almighty dollar. She says, my mother bought into all of that hook, line, and sinker. She said, many of us were lucky to get out with our lives. And she said, but what kind of lives did we actually have? Was any of it worth it? We bought into this dream of Hollywood, this image. It was a fantasy. She says, oh, I was fortunate. I had opportunities. And she's showing me touring and singing on stages and things like that. But she says, they own you. When you're under contract, they own you. They own everything about you. She says, especially back in the earlier days when Hollywood was mixed in with the mafia, she says. I don't know much about that. I know a little bit about it. Like, a little bit about like the Rat Pack and stuff a little bit, but I don't know a lot about it. And she says, there was a lot of under the table 
negotiating and things that happen, deals made. And she said, there are parties and things you were expected to attend. And she says, like you would think of, of PR events now, she said, but very different. She said, very different back then. You didn't really have a choice. You were under contract. And so she says, it wasn't as glamorous as you were, were it was promoted to be. Mm -mm. No, it was grueling. So what do you think now about the things that are happening now? It's hard because her, her attitude is just not, she doesn't have this like, she's, um, she's been, I don't want to say she's rough around the edges, but she's been through it. Like she's really, the shininess of her is rubbed off. Do you know what I mean? Like it's been, Like if I even ask her about politics now or being an activist or any of that, it doesn't feel sincere. It doesn't feel genuine. She just feels very much in a state of healing. She says, exactly. That's exactly right. It's exactly right. She says, not all of us that lived our lives as public figures and are in the afterlife have this beautiful transformational experience and information to share. And she says, it's not that I'm not in the afterlife in a high evolution or synergy with God and cosmic con or like the consciousness of love or oneness. She said, it's not that I'm separate from that, but it's that I come to you today and what you are connecting to me with is the real person. And what people need right now is the humanity of things, the humanness, the humanness. What do you want to share about that, Judy? What do you want to share about your humanness as an afterlife spirit? It's kind of a duality, isn't it? Do you feel that? It's exactly, that's exactly what it is, she says. She's like holding a drink and she's like, that's exactly what it is. The duality. Two things can exist at the exact same time. You can love your work and want to be a famous actress and absolutely hate the process and what you have to do in order to achieve that. Would you change it? Hmm. Yes. Yes, I would. If I had control over, if I had a different life, if I had different parents and different... Yeah, I would change it. But not to change the outcome of being able to sing or dance or be an actress. Yes, I would change some things. Yes. I don't I wouldn't I, I don't buy into the adage of all these things had to happen in order for me to be myself, she says, because I died old and alone. Okay, Judy, you were like late 40s. Okay, that's not old. Like I am older than you are, girlfriend. She says, ah, but it was a different time. And she says, my body deteriorated and was, it's like it was eaten up from the inside out, she says. Yeah, she really gives me this feeling of just being just like, it is hard to be in this energy, I'm just gonna say. But there's a purpose for this. There has to be, because why would I be channeling you right now? The humanity. 
the humanness. There are many people that have stories and they're real, real life experiences. And it's hard to listen to some of that. And sometimes it seems so outrageous. And sometimes it is embellished, you know, sometimes the PR person or the PR machine can make this smoke and mirrors kind of a thing, you know, like the, the romances and things like that, she says. We're again referring to Hollywood. She's saying, things aren't always as they seem. So when someone tells you what's really going on with them, they, they open up to you and they share with you and they are real with you, pay attention to that. That's what will get you through the times you're in now and what you're experiencing. She says, you don't, you're not looking for a savior or for an, another iconic figure. You don't even need wise advice. You don't need any of that. She says, you get to be who you are in the way that you can be. And that includes some of the not so pretty things about your life and your experience. You don't have to tone it down so other people will feel comfortable. And you don't have to ham it up so that you get attention. And she says, the real you is somewhere in between that, all those things. You can be the good girl and the bad girl. They coexist. And she said, probably one of the most important things is to not let life pin you down to any kind of stereotype or category based upon other people and what they need or want from you. You are not a puppet. You are a person. You've got to be yourself and stand up for yourself in those ways. And you'll know when it's safe to do that and when it's not. So do you trust people or did you trust people or did you find it hard to trust? And she says, ah, very few people did I trust. Very, very few people. And she says, I'm not proud of that. That's not something I recommend. Yeah, I would use the word discernment. You kind of kind of feel people out and stuff. And she says, well, you owe it to yourself to be true to yourself, she says, to, to share your story and not water it down or not hype it up. She says, just share it. And you will know based upon how people receive that, if they are people that could be in your life that you could trust to be close to you, whether that be as friends or as business, business acquaintances or, or romantic partners or lovers, she says. She says, the most important thing I would, she says, the, the most insightful thing she says that I could share would be that I was just so tired of trying to change myself, tweak things in different ways to appease others. And she says, I had so much work to do at the end to just pay the bills. And she says, that doesn't seem right. That doesn't seem right at all. And she says, and I, I will admit that I mistreated my body. And she says, but I learned to mistreat my body from my childhood in the early days of Hollywood. Hollywood taught me how to abuse my body. Hollywood did teach me that. That is the legacy I inherited from being a movie star. And that is just the plain truth, she says. That's the plain truth. Okay. Judy, I'm feeling a little depressing energy here. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, it's like matter of fact. Oh, Miss Judy. 
Is there anything we can do to help inspire spirit in the afterlife? Because it feels like like talking to you gives me this heavier feeling and this like heaviness. It's like so serious. It's serious. Can we tap into you at a higher vibrational level? Um, not because you're not, we don't appreciate the humanness and humanity of you, but why is this so low, so low, so low? Like I'm, I want us to be able to connect higher and deeper. And she says, this is, this is the come as you are. Be present here. She says, this is what you talk about. Show up. She says, I'm showing up. This is the reflection, she says, of the energy of the people who love me. This is how they are feeling. I am holding an energy for the collective. And she's saying like the queer community and the trans community and the people who are, are not appreciated for their uniqueness. And they're not sovereign they're being abused and mistreated at this time. And then she's saying, I relate to that. I feel that. So as a spirit, she says, I feel that. And that is what you are connecting to. And that is the truth. It is hard. It is hard. That's absolutely right. So if you don't like it, then change it. Change it. Do something to change it. And she says, and that's all I have to say about that. Wow, you guys. Okay. Woo! Can I bring in some Archangel Michael? to bring in and raise up our backbone, our spine, to give us an energy of feeling of a sense of alignment. Can we just do that? Bring in Archangel Michael and get a sense of kind of alignment and strength, a feeling of integrity as we show up for our individual human lives as we move forward, a recognition that all of this is in some way needed, insightful, and although hard or difficult, it's real. This is real. The feelings that you're feeling right now, it's real. And whatever is coming up for you, whatever topic or part of your life is being triggered or activated by Judy's energy that she's bringing forward from her community, for, for, from the afterlife for her advocacy, it's intended to help support you and heal you to allow you the freedom to recognize where your power is for you as a person to make changes for your individual life, for your life on purpose in alignment. So Archangel Michael comes in to align us energetically, nice deep breath in our heart. Full exhale. I'm going to invite in Archangel Hanel as well to help soften the energy for my empathic viewers and my friends who are watching this now, who are in the chat live stream or who are watching after the fact, to soften that heart space, to hold you in authenticity and in, in a deep, expanded, compassionate energy. Also going to honor Lady Kuan Yin, who comes in as well to soften that compassionate energy. So we've got Archangel Hanel and Lady Kuan Yin in your heart space. If you choose to work with them, feel free. Lots of light pink mauve energy, lots of salmon color, kind of peach energy coming in with the two of them. Again, Lady Kuan Yin and Archangel Hanel, H-A-N-I-L, to bring this to, to integrate this information that has been coming through. So we don't sit in a low place. So we allow ourselves the opportunity to go to the places, the lower places of ourselves, the depths of ourselves, to bring things forward for healing and release. Sometimes when we do channeling on Above Life Channel, it's about the energy, about the opportunity for clearing, for healing, for your personal healing journey. And so because you are an empath, you feel and sense energy, and are intuitive in that way, this experiences like this will hopefully help to serve you, okay, to support you 
all right, on your life journey. All right, nice breath in again one more time. Big exhale out. So I invite your healing helpers, your spiritual support team aligned with your highest good, the energy of God, creator, source, universe, prime creator, cosmic consciousness, whatever you align with, to help to continue to support you and help your energy to shift, move, clear, and adjust for whatever it is that you personally need, whatever you get from medic the medicine from this particular channeling session, from the alchemy. All right. So I hope you've inspired your spirit and filled you up with some hope or healing today and encouraged you then to show up for your life because this is your life after all and you get to live it. Just live it. Thank you, Judy. All right. I'm going to check in my chat here to say hello. Ooh, lots of chat. I don't see it on my stream here. Let me just say hello quick before we go. I'm looking at the chat. Let me just respond to the chat on my phone. Oh, there it is. Now it's up on my screen here. Let me just say hello before we leave here. With so many things. Hi, Lori. Nice to see you. Hi, Lisa from Florida. Hello, Dow. Hi, Patty. Thanks for showing up. I appreciate you. Hello, Aaron. Thanks for joining us. Hello, Daniel. Thank you, Patty. Thank you so much. All right, my friends. Thank you for being here as always. I look forward to connecting with you again on Sunday Morning Coffee, the next podcast next week, and also our next channeling session next week as well. Next Sunday is actually a double whammy. We've got Father's Day and a new moon. Ooh interesting energies bopping around. So that should be a, a fun Sunday morning coffee. Hopefully we can do a live stream. I'm hoping to, I'm trying to, we'll see if I actually make it on time for that. Hopefully I will. So thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for watching and thank you so much for supporting the channel. Make sure you sign up for my June 22nd uh, group reading session. I'm doing a, a kind of like a, it's called the Inspiring Psychic Experience. It's a small group. Um, it is a service that I offer. It will be a link in the description of this video. So you can go to the description and you can sign up for that. It's $40 for this one. Um, and we'll do like kind of old school psychic readings in the group and I'll, I'll um, connect and share some messages probably from some angels and some spirit guides as well. It's not a, a celebrity channeling. It's really a much more of a traditional kind of psychic reading style thing. So it's it should be pretty fun. It's right around the solstice, June 22nd at 6 p.m. Central. So you can see, you can sign up for that on the Facebook page Above Life channel, or also it is in the description here on this particular video as well. Okay. Thanks so much, you guys. Thanks for being here. <laughs>